Hello and welcome to the WAX Deposition Modelling and Later Flow webinar and thank you for accepting the invitation. My name is Mike Branchflower and I'm the Global Sales Manager for Later Flow in Kongsberg. If you're having any difficulties with the audio, please go to the audio pane and click on sound check in blue, which will guide you through the process. Uh, you can also join over the telephone if you can't get computer audio to work. I've also submitted that into the chat as well, so you should be able to see it there. Um, you'll have the opportunity to submit questions, so please type them into the questions pane of the control panel that you should see. Um, send them in at any time, and what we'll do is answer them as soon as possible after the presentation and demonstration. Uh, I've also attached a later flow product sheet, which you can download in the handouts pane as well. I'm now going to hand over to Wouter Dijkhuizen. He's the later flow product champion and he will present and demonstrate wax deposition modeling within later flow. Okay, thank you, Mike, for the introduction. So this webinar is about uh, later flow uh, wax deposition. It's about uh, I'm going to give a small model overview and then a demonstration afterwards. So the, the model overview, it will be uh, consisting of a little bit about the uh, objectives of the model. So what, what do we intend to uh, simulate uh, here? Uh, some of the model simplifications that we have uh, made. A little bit about the mass transfer models that are uh, giving us the wax uh, formation. The slurry viscosity models for uh, simulating the, the wax particles in the in the oil, the increase on the viscosity, and some other model details that are worthwhile uh, to know. And then uh, finally, I will demonstrate uh, how to set up a case uh, and use the wax deposition feature in uh, later flow. Okay, so the objectives of the wax deposition uh, model. So I, I know that there are some different uh, wax uh, models uh, out there. So this is just to uh, set the stage for what uh, we intend to do with our uh, WAX model. So the primary objectives uh, here are to investigate uh, how often it is necessary to do a pigging run to remove the WAX layer. So it's mainly about uh, pigging uh, frequency. So the idea is that, that uh, we, we have a limited amount of uh, WAX formation on the, on the pipe wall, maybe in the range of uh, two to five uh, millimeters. And then uh, you send the pig through to scrape off the wax and then uh, the wax uh, starts to uh, accumulate again when you produce uh, more. So that's the main uh, the main objective. We do, we do not intend to uh, let the entire pipe uh, be plugged by uh, wax. Uh, also uh, we would like to see the effect of uh, wax formation on the pressure drop. So even a few millimeters of uh, wax deposit it can uh, lower the production rate because the cross-sectional area of the pipe uh, gets uh, reduced so you will get higher uh, velocities and uh, secondly the wax particles increase the oil viscosity so that also uh, actually it may increase the pressure drop uh, through the pipe so that's Im important uh, to know so uh, lower production rates uh, means uh, less uh, money of course. And then the secondary objective is to investigate uh, wax removal uh, scenarios. So this is not the main uh, objective, but uh, it's possible to study this with later flow as well. So it's possible to send uh, hot fluid uh, through the pipeline in order to get rid of the wax. Uh, it's possible to use the electrical heating uh, in later flow to uh, simulate uh, wax uh, removal. So we have uh, uh, yeah, we have a heating source in later flow that can be used uh, for that. And finally, it's possible to send a uh, pig through the pipeline uh, to scrape off uh, the wax. So all of that is possible to study with uh, later flow. Uh, so some of the most uh, notable uh, model simplifications that we've made. So the, the model does not aim at uh, simulating uh, the restart of a gelled uh, oil pipeline. So this would uh, most likely involve a uh, very complicated characterization uh, procedure so it is very difficult to, uh, uh, to do the lab tests uh, required to, uh, yeah, to, to get the right uh, physics for the gelled uh, oil so we, we did not go uh, along that uh, route so it seems uh, quite uh, quite complicated and uh, we're not certain that uh, like all of our customers would be able to uh, utilize uh, this if you make it so complicated then the aging of the wax deposit is also uh, not uh, taken into account. So like hardening of the of the wax is not uh, part of the model. Uh, 
uh, we only simulate one type of, uh, of wax. So in reality, uh, we, we know that uh, wax consists of uh, hundreds of different and, um, molecules and it has a quite uh, wide uh, molecular uh, distribution but uh, just to keep things uh, simple and uh, usable we only c consider one type of wax with a single uh, density and uh, an average uh, molecular weight then the wax layer thickness it does not change the cell volume uh, in the pipeline and that's okay Okay, uh, because we're mainly interested in uh, a few millimeters of uh, wax deposit at the most and then uh, we do take into account the effect of the wax layer on the pressure drop uh, through the pipe, so, so that's okay. But uh, just to uh, know that uh, the cell volume does not actually change uh, when there's wax uh, deposit. Then finally, for the pigging, we assume 100% uh, efficiency at uh, wax removal, and then the wax that is removed is not uh, tracked. And the reason for that is that uh, th these big chunks of uh, wax, we don't really uh, know how to uh, simulate the uh, suitable rheology. It's not like uh, having a wax uh, slurry with uh, small wax particles. Uh, these big uh, clumps of wax, it's, it's quite uh, hard uh, to estimate the effect on the, uh, yeah, on the pressure drop uh, over the pig uh, because of them. Okay, then we get to the internals of the model. So the the, the main part of the model is based on uh, the PhD thesis of uh, Lee, which is from the University of uh, Michigan. So th this is uh, based on a coupled approach for uh, heat and uh, mass transfer in the turbulent uh, boundary layer at the uh, pipe wall. So there's a small uh, picture showing at the bottom here. If I can get my... Uh, if I can change the cursor. Yeah, I think this should uh, work. Yeah, I hope you can see that. But in the bottom right picture, you can see a drawing of this turbulent boundary layer. So there's a wax layer on the pipe wall shown, and there's a wall flux of wax deposition here, which is combined with a heat transfer at the pipe wall. So this combination of the wall flux of the wax components and the heat transfer, that is quite important to do that in a coupled manner. So this is a kinetic model, it's not uh, equilibrium uh, based and it, it takes into consideration uh, the temperature and concentration uh, gradients. So the, the original uh, model, it's uh, two dimensional, but it has been uh, reduced uh, to one dimension for use in uh, ladder flow, which makes it uh, much faster and uh, yeah, the comparisons uh, that we've done, one of them is uh, shown uh, in the top right corner over here. It shows that there's no uh, significant loss of accuracy, uh, really. So there's not really any uh, trade-off uh, that has been made uh, there. And uh, just to uh, note, okay, what, what is really the the key for this uh, wax deposition model? The, uh, yeah, the key is that there's a very strong competition between the crystallization, so the formation of uh, small wax particles in the oil, and also the wall deposition. So th this very strong uh, competition, that is really the key uh, part of the of the model. So uh, basically the thermodynamics, it will determine uh, how much uh, wax will form in total. And uh, yeah, so basically the, the model it determines uh, where the wax uh, forms, if you form uh, wax particles or do, do we form uh, a wax deposit on the, on the pipe wall. And then uh, just uh, one side note is uh, typically for uh, yeah, during shut-in conditions of the pipeline, you, you don't get any uh, wall deposit because you don't really have a turbulent uh, boundary layer. So you only form wax deposit uh, typically when uh, you're producing. And then the, the exact uh, formation rate, it depends on the many conditions like the flow velocity, uh, heat transfer, etc. Then the slurry viscosity models, so once we form uh, wax particles in the oil, the, the oil viscosity will start to, to uh, change because of this uh, dispersion. And then we need to do something uh, with, that, with that. So the, we have the option of using three different uh, viscosity models. So there's uh, the, the Thomas uh, model, which was the first one uh, we implemented, which is Newtonian. So it, it, ta it takes into account the concentration of the... Uh, wax particles and uh, nothing more, so it's not uh, dependent on the shear rate. And the other two models, the Pedersen uh, model, which is uh, very, very well known if you're uh, used to uh, PVT sim, but uh, you can also derive the parameters using uh, multi-flash, so that one is uh, dependent on the shear rate, and so that's du, dy in the equations here. And uh, the SOFA model, 
that is uh, also a non-Newtonian uh, model that was uh, proposed by uh, Total. So you can use uh, any of these uh, models to uh, model the slurry uh, viscosity. Now, some of the other model details, so uh, the re reaction rate, uh, reaction heat, I should say, it, it is also part of the model. So there's a notable uh, entropy change uh, associated with uh, wax formation because it is a phase change uh, type of uh, operation. And then uh, this may uh, reduce the wax formation rate uh, significantly. So uh, it's not uh, uh, like uh, the wax formation is instantaneous because of this entropy to be changed, uh, there's a little bit of a delay, so you need to transport some extra energy. Uh, the pressure drop increase due to the water deposit is modeled in a simplified way, so that means that uh, we've already seen that we don't uh, change the pipe volume, but uh, instead of changing the pipe vo volume, we uh, modify the wall friction factor. And then because of that, uh, the, the pressure drop uh, uh, due to the smaller surface area is uh, taken into consideration. So, so there is an increased pressure drop uh, when the wall deposit increases. And then uh, yeah, wall deposit, it also acts as a uh, type of uh, free uh, insulation. So this is modeled in later flow as an additional uh, wall layer on the inside of the steel pipe with uh, thermal conductivity and also uh, heat capacity. So and then just as, uh, as an example, uh, three millimeters of wax deposit, it's reduces the overall heat transfer coefficient uh, for a bare steel pipe by an order of magnitude. So if you don't have any insulation on your uh, pipe, this, can, this effect can be quite uh, significant, uh, actually. So it's an important, uh, important effect to take into consideration. And finally, we have uh, something called the stop criterion in ladder flow. And that is because we are interested in the picking frequency. Typically, you, you want to uh, run the simulation until you have uh, a couple of millimeters of, uh, uh, yeah, of, of wax uh, layer thickness, and then uh, you send the pig through. If you wait uh, too long, that it might get, uh, uh, you might get problems with the pig uh, getting stuck or things like that. So th then it becomes a bit uh, too dangerous, and, and that is why we have this uh, stop criterion, so that the simulation is stopped uh, whenever a uh, user-defined limit is reached, just for convenience. Okay, so now I will show a demonstration of how to uh, set up. Uh, this uh, ladder flow model with a uh, wax deposition. Okay, I will demonstrate this in the latest uh, version of uh, ladder flow, so that is version uh, 2.4. So what I've done uh, yesterday is uh, prepare a uh, base case. So this is just your uh, run-of-the-mill uh, flow assurance uh, case, just a single pipe to keep things uh, simple. So I have an inlet boundary that is flashed. So this is an oil dominated case. So it will be mostly oil with a little bit of gas and a tiny amount of water. The flow rate is relatively high. So this is considered as a full production rate. And then at the outlet, we have a reasonable outlet pressure of 80 bar. So it's quite quite a high pressure. And it's supposed to resemble a pipeline between two platforms. So there's a downcomer here then a horizontal pipe, and then uh, it goes up again to a second uh, platform. And the pipeline is uh, 10 kilometers uh, long, and uh, yeah, we can look at some of the parameters. Uh, so if I assume the five degree uh, seawater temperature, so there's quite a lot of uh, heat transfer from the seawater on the outside of the pipe, with uh, I've assumed a one meter per second uh, uh, yeah, flow across the pipe. And uh, yeah, the pipe dimension is uh, 12 inches. And then the, yeah, the pipe it consists of, uh, yeah, of a steel pipe with a little bit of uh, concrete uh, on the outside. So it's, uh, the concrete acts as a little bit of insulation, but it's not, uh, it's not well insulated. So the temperature drops quite quickly. Now if we initialize this case, we can just have a quick look at uh, what the uh, temperature does. Yeah, now it's uh, initialized. So we can see that uh, okay, pressure drop over the pipe, it's around uh, 6 bar from the inlet to the outlet, and the temperature drops from uh, 50 degrees uh, centigrade to uh, 5 degrees almost uh, at the outlet. So uh, because of this, uh, we will probably get uh, wax deposit in the pipeline. Okay, now we'll uh, duplicate uh, this case and uh, turn it into a wax deposition uh, case. So we'll just uh, call it uh, something else.
Okay, so it's copying uh, the entire uh, previous uh, case now, and then the, the only thing I need to do is uh, modify the case uh, setup to do the wax deposition. So we, we do that by going into the case settings uh, here. So the PVT is uh, fine, we don't need to uh, change anything, but uh, under options, we, we need to uh, turn on the wax deposition uh, model. So, so I'm putting this to uh, yes. Then, uh, yeah, we need to go into the wax deposition uh, settings, and uh, which is where we can uh, change some parameters. So the first uh, input is the precipitation uh, curve. This is something that you get from your uh, PVT. So I don't have any uh, particular uh, wax data for uh, this current case. I will just use the default uh, curve just as an uh, illustration. And, uh, the red dots over here, those are the data points coming from the PVT package and then the, the green line here is what uh, later flow uh, makes of this so if we enlarge it a little bit you can see that later flow fits a uh, spline uh, curve through these uh, points and, th and that is because uh, we like this curve to be uh, smooth otherwise uh, it will show in the results uh, that uh, yeah that there's some artifacts so we used to have a linear interpolation but that didn't work so well for the wax deposition so uh, actually uh, having a smooth curve it's uh, it's quite important for this and it's also uh, physically reasonable considering the uh, qu quite large number of uh, different components uh, that, that make up the wax. Okay, that's the precipitation curve. Yeah, I don't have any better data for the reaction heat uh, either, but it's possible to change the value here. But I think uh, 250 kilojoules per kilogram is uh, reasonable. And then the viscosity model, if you have data for that, you can change it as well. It's possible to use the Pedersen uh, model, then you have to give some uh, multipliers or one of the other models. And for this demo, I will just use the simple uh, Thomas uh, model. Then the stop criterion. So this is really dependent on the, your uh, pigging uh, criterion. I think five millimeters is reasonable uh, here. And then the advanced options, uh, I will not go into detail uh, for that. But I can mention that uh, we, we have some uh, tool tips in Laderflow. So it's possible to get a short explanation uh, here in the GUI for that for them. And then, uh, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, if you want a short uh, exp explanation, and more details can be found in the user manual in later flow. Okay, so we've turned on the wax deposition model. You can also see that it automatically turned on the custom fluid tracking, which is to track the wax particles and also the wax uh, former. So wax former, those are the molecules uh, that come in the oil phase that uh, form the wax. And then uh, this is done, uh, th these are added automatically in later flow. Okay, that's uh, basically all we need need to uh, set up. We can see at uh, the inlet boundary that uh, the, the, the wax former uh, fraction it is uh, grayed out. So it, it's not necessary to, uh, uh, to uh, specify how much uh, wax former is coming in. Later flow automatically determines that based on the precipitation curve and that puts in uh, wax former at the inlet. So we don't need to do anything with the boundary conditions here. Okay, now we can uh, run the case. So we'll initialize it and then uh, run it for 10 hours. The initialization and later flow, it doesn't give you any uh, wax uh, formation. So there won't be any wax deposit, uh, so it's reset uh, to zero. And also there are no wax, uh, yeah, there are no wax particles uh, in, the, in, in the oil. So while the simulation is running, we can already analyze the results. So we can use the wax deposition uh, plot uh, template to show you the most important uh, variables. So you can see here that uh, the temperature profile is basically the same as uh, for the base case. So it goes from uh, 50 degrees at the inlet to around uh, yeah, maybe a little bit above uh, 5 degrees at, uh, at the outlet. At this point, at uh, 30 degrees Celsius, so that is uh, 2 kilometers in, into the pipeline, we cross the wax appearance uh, temperature. So that's where the precipitation curve uh, kicks off. And then... Uh, after that, we get wax formation, and indeed, we can see that uh, okay, the wax layer it uh, accumulates after uh, two kilometers in the pipeline. So there's quite a lot of wax uh, formation uh, initially here, and then it kind of uh, tapers off a bit. And that is related to how steep the temperature gradient uh, in the pipeline uh, is. So uh, a higher cooling rate it will give you more uh, wax deposition uh, on the pipe wall uh, compared to the yeah, compared to uh, wax particles in the in the oil flow. Yeah, just update this while the results are coming in. So if we uh, drag the time slider, we can see that uh, during initialization basically nothing uh, happened. 
and then uh, yeah, afterwards the deposition rate it stabilizes and we can see that the wax layer, that's the green line, and that one is uh, growing in the pipeline. So if you simulate this uh, long enough, then you can see that uh, the wax layer, it will, uh, it will accumulate. And at some point, uh, quite a long time in the future, I don't think we'll reach that uh, after 10 hours. Uh, at some point we will reach uh, 5 millimeters, and then the simulation will be uh, automatically terminated by, by uh, later flow. There's also some other things you can uh, plot related to wax deposition. So it's possible to make a trend plot for the uh, for the pipe, and then plot the uh, total mass of uh, wax, which is uh, interesting. So in this plot you can see the accumulated amount of uh, wax. So first of all the dissolved wax, so that is basically the wax former in the oil. And then the, the wax particles, you can see that uh, they stabilize uh, at a plateau value uh, almost immediately after starting the simulation. And so the, the wall deposit, you can see that it's linearly increasing uh, uh, over time as expected. So it's uh, slowly uh, growing a wax layer on the, on the pipe wall uh, basically. So this is uh, just another way of looking at the same uh, results basically. Okay, I think that uh, concludes the demonstration. We'll, we'll go back to uh, Mike now for some questions. Okay, thank you very much, Dieter, for a good presentation and demonstration. Uh, we have one question from Lakito Lau. Um, for you, Dieter, I think I know the answer, but you should, you'd better take it. Um, it's the controlled thickness for the stock criteria um, based on the maximum thickness across the profile, or can you track it at specific locations? What had it decide that? Yeah, that's a good question actually. So this uh, mm -hmm. stop criterion uh, that we have uh, here, let me just go to the right screen. So this uh, stop criterion, it's uh, basically the maximum uh, thickness. And then, uh, yeah, so the, the logic behind that is that, uh, yeah, basically the, the, the thickest, uh, yeah, so the, the highest wax uh, thickness along the pipe, that, that will basically determine if it's still safe to uh, send a pick through anyway. So it's really the, the maximum wax uh, thickness that uh, matters here. Okay. Um, we also had a question about whether we'll get copies of the presentation, which, which you will. You'll get a link to the webinar afterwards. Okay, we've got more questions flooding in now, so uh, brace yourself. Um, uh, Okay, the wax deposition is based only on theoretical approach, or do we have the experimental data field experience um, validation? Yeah, I, I can. Uh, yeah, I can comment on that. So the later flow partners, uh, they uh, especially Total, they they have done uh, a lot of testing on this uh, on this uh, module. So the testing it against field data is difficult because uh, you don't really know uh, the wax thickness in your pipeline uh, in the in the field. So yeah, field data is kind of uh, difficult. So you might be able to estimate after you do a pigging run how much the wax is coming out uh, in your separator, but uh, that's kind of uh, indirect. But uh, yeah, we we have done a lot of uh, testing against uh, experiments and things like that in order to uh, check that the model is working uh, correctly. And then, yeah, the results, uh, they seem to be uh, reasonable. Also, we've, we've checked it against uh, analytical solutions, so uh, it's possible to, to, uh, to see what the results uh, should be in uh, certain uh, limiting cases. Okay, I'm just typing your text in as we go along there to set up. I think I've caught the, the main points there. Um, Got a, a good question from Hack and Skipness at uh, Shell, I think, here. Will the increased velocity shear off the wax? Yeah, that's also a good point. So uh, we don't consider uh, yeah, removal of, uh, of wax by uh, shear forces. So I know that in, in literature there's a bit of uh, controversy about that. So some people believe that uh, if you have high shear then uh, the wax should uh, be removed. But uh, yeah, other people say uh, it, uh, it doesn't. So I, th I think it, uh, in reality it probably depends on the nature of the wax, uh, whether or not it's... Uh, it has aged uh, because uh, I think uh, if, if you have a fresh uh, wax layer, I, I can imagine that it's probably very uh, smooth. And I, I don't really see how the shear stress would uh, tear that off the wall. So, the, so uh, just to conclude, that that's not part of the model. Okay. Um, why did we select Lee? Why did we use the Lee model? What was the decision around using Lee? You know, the Michigan uh, model. Yeah, it's. Uh, 
it seems uh, to give uh, good results and it's uh, yeah it's uh, suitable for implementation in LIDAR flow which is kind of uh, kind of important so the uh, also the yeah, the mass transfer models etc in LIDAR flow they're also based on uh, kinetic approaches so uh, it fits uh, nicely with the philosophy behind uh, LIDAR flow of having a non equilibrium approach yep that's okay um, any more questions yeah, we've got quite a lot of questions here. Not sure if we're going to get through them all. Um, please, can you clarify if the fluid velocity is mod modified after wax deposition? Fluid velocity. I know the viscosity. The fluid is the fluid velocity modified after wax deposition. Yeah, so the fluid velocity is not uh, is not uh, changed because we don't uh, change the pipe volume, but uh, the pressure drop is uh, changed. I, I can also uh, show that actually. So I can uh, just show you the, uh, the effect on the pressure drop uh, here in this uh, simulation so yeah we can just take the frictional uh, pressure drop yeah so we, we can see that uh, okay initially the pressure drop is 4.4 uh, uh, bar and then uh, the combined effect of the uh, yeah the combined effect of the wax uh, slurry and uh, the the wax layer on the on the pipe wall you can see that uh, the, the pressure drop is uh, is increasing very slightly uh, over time and, and that is because of the wax uh, deposition so no the velocity doesn't uh, change but we, we do uh, account for the effect on uh, on the pressure drop Okay, uh, next question. How does the model track the wax mass during the pigging? What's what's happening there in later flow? Yeah, so the wax that is uh, scraped off is not uh, tracked at all. So basically, uh, it, we assume that it uh, disappears instantaneously, which is not uh, terribly realistic. But uh, yeah, the, the alternative would be to uh, turn it into a wax uh, slurry, which is not realistic uh, either. So uh, I guess at some point in time uh, yeah. we might uh, find a better solution for that yeah have a look at that um, next one is the wax layer impacting the deposition rate so as you start to deposit wax is the deposition rate changing it looked quite constant in that simulation um, uh, yeah so because of the installation effect uh, and uh, yeah it will actually uh, uh, taper off a bit so I'm not sure it is uh, possible to see in this uh, plot because the wax layer thickness is still quite small. But uh, for, for typical uh, simulations, you can see that it, the initial uh, wax deposition is quite fast and then it tapers off uh, as you get more uh, wax deposit. Uh, just yeah. because, uh, the, because of the insulation effect uh, mainly. Okay, I'm just going through these as quick as I can, and I'm not sure we're going to, we've got a couple of minutes left. Okay, is there an optimal time step for using later flow with the wax deposition model? Um, not, model? not really, I think uh, in this case, I run it, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's CFL limited. So in this case, I'm just running it at the same time step I would uh, run the standard uh, model, basically. So there's nothing uh, different uh, there. So it, it, uh, I forgot to mention that uh, if you want to speed up your uh, wax deposition uh, process on, on the wall, we have a time acceleration uh, factor. So you can actually use that to uh, speed up your uh, simulation. So if you want to uh, not simulate for uh, days and days uh, when the wax deposition is very slow, then uh, you can increase this uh, factor in order to uh, sp speed it up a bit. And so yeah. this doesn't change the time step in the in the model but it just uh, speeds up the wall deposition uh, process only so it, it does not impact the multi-phase flow but uh, it uh, allows you to run uh, a bit faster very good um, is the model applicable to waxy condensates as well uh, it should be yes so for waxy condensates you just get another uh, precipitation curve uh, probably but uh, it shouldn't be a problem Okay, um, with the wax removal, how does the model account for the, um, I think it's the wax disappearance temperature and the kinetics of wax melting? Not quite sure we... I didn't quite get that one. Yeah, um, maybe I can get hold, I know who it is, um, I can get hold of uh, the person afterwards, wax removal with heat, I think is what we're... Yeah, so it's possible to uh, remove wax with heat, either by sending a hot fluid uh, through or using the electric uh, heating. And then uh, what happens is that the wax uh, melts and it, it turns back in 
to uh, OYO and uh, Wax uh, former. So th this process is fully uh, reversible in Leda Flow, and uh, well, so there, there are no uh, there are no simplifications uh, there. Yeah, so, so it's, it's, it's possible to do that as many times as you want. So the system warms up, the wax melts and disappears from the wall and back into the bulk or whatever, and that's fine. Yep. Yeah, and then if necessary, you can turn it back into wax uh, later. So it's fully reversible. Yeah. So I think I've answered the question, but if any, if, if we, if you feel we haven't answered the questions properly, just uh, send me an email and we'll get back to you. Um, we do have a few more. <laughs> um, how is it possible to define all the all the variables in the advanced options? What is the impact of these variables? Well, go ahead, Vata, but uh, I mean, there's lots of options. Yeah, so for these uh, settings, I don't recommend uh, to uh, change them the, the first time you uh, use it. So this is more for uh, advanced uh, users. If you want to, uh, uh, yeah, for instance, the tuning factors, you can use that to uh, adjust the results. But uh, I don't recommend uh, changing them. Uh, time acceleration factor, you can use that uh, freely. So it's just for speeding up the simulation. It doesn't have any negative uh, impact. And then uh, yeah, the wall roughness increase, it's just if you uh, believe that uh, wax deposition it changes the wall roughness, you can use that. And then this, this minimum surface area of the wax particles is not uh, terribly uh, important, uh, really. So this is just for the nucleation uh, process which uh, yeah, should be okay. And uh, yeah, wax dissolution hysteresis, so you can uh, use that if uh, if you know what you're doing. And uh, trapped oil fra fraction is also, you can uh, adjust it uh, if you want. So uh, yeah, these options are really, if you want to, uh, if you have a detailed knowledge about what uh, is going on in your uh, process, then, uh, then you can use them. But uh, I would use them with uh, caution. Yeah, we have another question about whether the this wax functionality is included in later flow. So I'll take that one. So as is common with all later flow, all the functionality is available. So wax deposition modeling is there. However, to generate the uh, wax deposition curve, you'll need to do that within, a, within something like multi-flash, um, which you would need to need to get hold of separately. But all the wax um, functionality is included in the later flow package. OK. Um, one for you, Vata. Is it possible to mitigate the wax deposition by injecting wax dispersants? That's a good question. I'll let you answer that one. Uh, <laughs> no, that's uh, we, we don't account for that in uh, in later flow. So uh, yeah, we, we don't uh, have any inhibitors that uh, impact the wax formation. Yeah. Okay, I'm just typing some answers in here. So it's a bit noisy. I apologise for that. Um, I think that's about right. Um, at the moment, we don't do that. Okay, sensible. Couple of questions. Yeah, a question about the ID and the wall friction again. So we're saying that um, the impact considered is only in terms of wall friction, no ID restriction is expected. That's what we have at the moment within later flow. Um, but just because we're assuming small or thin layers, I guess, Vata, isn't it? We're not, we're not taking, we're not reducing the volume of the cell. Yeah, that, that is uh, correct. So if we had uh, very thick layers of wax on the on the pipe wall, we, we would have to do something with the pipe volume. But uh, as it stands right now, it's it's not that important for a small uh, uh, for a small wax uh, thickness. So we we made this uh, simplification. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, a couple more. Might as well do the questions. And if people need to leave, that's okay, of course. But we, I think we, it would be good if we could answer all the questions. Um, what about your insulation statement about a small, a thin layer of wax changing the uh, the magnitude? How did you do that? I guess you just ran a simulation, didn't you, in later flow, and just to prove that? Or uh, yeah, it's, it's just a part of the dynamic wall model in later flow. So uh, yeah, instead of having uh, the steel and the cement uh, layer, there's also a wax layer in this uh, in this case. So okay. it's just like uh, any other uh, wall layer, basically. And then yeah, uh, yeah, the wax it has a certain uh, it has certain properties that are defined in the in the custom fluids. So you can see here that uh, okay, the the wax it has a density, 
which you can change. And also the thermal conductivity is used in the, and uh, the heat capacity. The, these uh, yeah. parameters are used in the thermal computation for the wax layer. Okay, so we just you just build a model in later flow and you can check it, yeah. Okay, a um, couple more. Are there any guidelines to determine the coefficients? That's a good question. We talked about that yesterday. So that, you know, the, the coefficients for the uh, viscosity models, I assume. Yeah, so that's something you need to uh, model in uh, your favorite uh, PVD uh, package. So for instance, for the Pedersen uh, model, you can do a lab experiment uh, in either PVD sim or multi-flash. And that uh, basically determines the multipliers. So that is yeah. the multiplier here. Yeah, th th those are the values you get from your PVD uh, package. Okay. Um, are there any guidelines to determine the coefficients? I think that's probably the same question. If not, um, we can... What's the what's the uh, magnitude and pressure change with time to do with the friction factor and wax? Um, yeah, I think we might need to. That's quite a complicated question, so I think we might need to take that one separately. But it's again, it's relating to the, uh, the re reduction in the diameter and the friction factor and things like that, and how the pressure compares to what would really happen. So we need to. Um, Maybe run a couple of simulations with them and out the wax layer and see what the difference in the pressure drop would be. Um, are we planning on looking at gelled oil? We don't have it at the moment, but are we planning on doing something with that? Uh, not in the foreseeable future because we did look at that and uh, like, like the models that are out there, they're, they're ludicrously uh, complicated. So, so I have a lot of respect for the people that uh, develop that. But uh, I think for uh, yeah, for general purpose uh, use, it, it might be a bit uh, yeah. might be a bit overkill. Uh, it's very difficult to characterize uh, your, your fluids uh, in, in a good uh, way. So it's very involved in terms of uh, lab work. Okay, um, this is another good question. Um, does a friction factor take into consideration the additional roughness of the wax layer? Uh, so if you uh, t if you in increase the wall roughness as a function of the of the wax layer here by changing this wall roughness increase uh, parameter, th then uh, it uh, changes uh, that. So so it's uh, adjustable by the user. Yeah, that's basically a yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. I think that's related to the hysteresis about wax would re-dissolve at a different temperature than the wax appearance. Temperature. Yeah, that's this uh, wax uh, dissolution uh, hysteresis. So it's kind of similar to what you have with hydrates. Uh, yeah. So you can imagine that uh, the wax it dissolves at slightly higher temperature than uh, uh, yeah, where it was uh, when it was formed. Yeah. So it's this hysteresis option, is it? Not the answer. Yeah. I can't spell anyway. Okay. Um, we've had the question on wax dispersant already, so we don't cover that at the moment. And the gelled. Will we do any? Are we likely to look at the effect of wax dispersants? It's probably too complicated on the chemistry side, I would have thought, to know what effect that would have just by pure modeling. Uh, yeah, it's, it's quite. Uh quite complicated. Maybe at some point uh, we, we have had some requests about uh, wax inhibitors, but uh, well, we haven't really had time to uh, go into that. Yeah. Um, a question about this webinar and previous ones about whether they're all available. They're actually all on the Kongsberg YouTube um, channel. And I think you have to look for a playlist called webinars or something like that. Energy, I think it's called, I'll just type it in, energy it may get moved, but it's called Energy Webinars Playlist or something like that. So yes, you can find all the previous webinars. And if you need one, just uh, get hold of me, send me an email, that's fine. Um, what do you think the current maximum thickness should be on the wax layer based on the approach that we've taken with the, you know, with the uh, not reducing the diameter, I guess it's five mil or something like that, but. Uh, yeah, so you can have a thicker wax layer. I think 10 millimeters might still be okay, but uh, I think it, it really depends on the, the thickness uh, relative to the pipeline size. 
So if you have a very small uh, pipeline, maybe four inches, then uh, you can probably handle a little bit less before the approach uh, breaks down. But uh, we, we verified that even uh, like the pressure drop uh, change, it's even accurate for a very thick uh, wax layer. So you can have 20, 30 millimeters and it's still uh, relatively accurate. But uh, well, we don't change the velo velocity directly uh, of the flow. So other things might uh, begin to uh, deteriorate a bit. Okay, so it's not, that's okay. Uh, the last point before we close the webinar, um, if we have, it's just a, 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 not really a question, it's a, it's a point worth noting that um, if we have the um, lab data of viscosity, this will include the wax. So we, I think we need to not use the multipliers then, if that makes sense. But uh, yeah, that's just a, a comment. Okay, that was a, a lot of questions, much more than the previous webinar. So obviously, obviously got everybody's interest. Um, thanks, thanks, Wouter, and thanks for everyone for attending. Um, you should get a follow-up email within a day, and you'll get a link to be able to view the whole webinar all over again. And as I've said, I don't know, hopefully you've seen the, the message pop up, but uh, there is a Kongsberg YouTube channel, and I think you need to look for energy webinars, and you'll find all the ones on slug capturing and previous versions and things like that. Um, and if you have any questions or we haven't answered your questions properly today, please just send me an email and we'll get you a more detailed response. Um, on behalf of Kongsberg, thank you for joining the webinar and we hope to see you at the next one. Enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.